Hi, I'm Katie McDonald. Today we're going to talk about the lysosomes, autophagy, and cancer activity. So first we're going to talk about autophagy. We're going to watch this video about autophagy. Autophagy. Why do we need it? This is Paul. Every day he reads his favorite newspaper, but over time a giant stack of paper collects in his house. Only the recycling truck can save him from drowning in yesterday's news. But what happens to his paper afterwards? Much of it is reconstituted for new uses in the cycle we call recycling. But long before we began recycling our trash, nature was following the same principle. Even the cells in our body recycle their trash. There, the cycle is called autophagy. Cells eliminate invading viruses and bacteria, but also harmful protein aggregates and old or damaged parts of the cell's nucleus that are no longer needed. The process of breaking these things down involves two liquid-filled structures inside the cell. The autophagosome collects the trash and transports it to the lysosome. The lysosome contains digestive enzymes that finally separate the cellular junk into its component parts. But don't worry, nothing goes to waste. These broken down parts are turned into new cell components that can be used again. This has many advantages. Our body's natural resources are conserved, we save energy, and our cells' trash can never overflow. But sometimes the trash isn't disposed of correctly. This can cause diseases such as infections with certain forms of viral influenza, Alzheimer's, or cancer. But how is autophagy controlled? Paul found the answer in one of his newspapers. The Japanese biologist Yoshinori Osumi was doing research about 25 years ago when he made a major discovery. He was investigating the genes of simple yeast cells. In various experiments, he kept changing those genes in order to test the effect this would have on the cell's recycling process. Eventually, he found 15 genes in the yeast that were responsible for different stages of the autophagy process. Then he was able to apply his finding to human cells, which is why he received the 2016 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. There are still many puzzles and secrets about autophagy, but scientists are working on decoding them. Paul is relieved to know how important his built-in recycling system is for keeping his cells healthy. So I hope that was a helpful video. Um, basically, it's just that autophagy is a way for our cells to be able to uh, reuse the different components um, once you know they've kind of outlived their use. Then we can recycle them and then put them back to use in the cell. So this is just a diagram that we're going to go through that's kind of showing you the different ways that this can happen within a cell. So first you have um, kind of within the cell, a way that this is happening is when you have these components, like in the video, it talked about protein aggregates and, you know, organelles that have kind of like outlived their um, lifespan. So these are, they need to be degraded. Like right here, you can see the mitochondria. So um, these are components in the cell that need to be degraded. So they kind of get encased into this um, double layer membrane. And then a second way that this happens is if we need to take in, uh, so we've taken in this, um, these components and then now they are in a membrane. And so this needs to be degraded. Maybe it's something that our cells don't need. Maybe kind of like a virus or something that we've taken in. So then it's going to um, then fuse with our autophagosome or just this double layer kind of vacuole that we've formed. And so then the third way is that we have here our lysosomes. So uh, your lysosomes then have this permeus and they have these enzymes in here that are then going to fuse with this double layer membrane. And then these enzymes here in the lysosome are then gonna start breaking all this down. And as you can kind of see, it's releasing those components back into the cell. So it's recycling them back so that way our cell can use them. So I thought it would be really interesting to look at an actual image of a cell doing this. So this is a cell and then you have here like your endosome that we saw here, this is coming in, it's this second scenario. And then this is the actual like, autophagosome. 
So here's another image of the cell. This is our vacuole lumen back here. And then you have the vacuole membrane. So you can see it's kind of taking in these parts from the cell. And then this is the cytosol. And then here you can see a mitochondria. So it's just allowing you like a marker um, within the cell. So this is the cytosolic cargo of the autophagosome. Again, it's what we saw in that last diagram. And the autophagosome right here, just after fusion with the vacuole, so it's already kind of become encased. And then these right here are your autophagic <clears throat> bodies. So this is after they've kind of fused, and then you have that um, fusion vacuole that's kind of encasing um, the parts within the cell that need to be broken down. So that's everything for this PowerPoint. So now we're gonna to go to the actual activity and kind of talk through that. Okay, so this will be um, your lysosomes, autophagy and cancer activity. So your first question is just asking you, you know, what's the function of a cell? You all talked about this in class. The second question here is actually talking about how um, understanding what the lysosome does can help you understand how a buildup of protein can actually lead to disease such as Alzheimer's disease. So in this question, you're gonna kind of think about the autophagy lysosome system and um, how if we have less lysosomes, then how is that going to cause you know neurodegeneration? How is it gonna cause Alzheimer's disease? And then there's also a really interesting summary of the research paper that I'm kind of talking about in this question that you can go read if you're interested in kind of learning more about it. So now these are the questions. Um, if you'll recall from the um, science, like the confocal microscopy um, PowerPoint, we actually went through and broke down this image right here. And it comes from this paper, the downregulation of autophagy related protein five uh, contributes to the pathogenesis of early stage cutaneous melanoma. So in this research study, the researchers are hypothesizing that those cancer cells are using that autophagy lysosome system less than the non-cancerous cells. So that's their hypothesis. So they're saying that this protein is down-regulated or your cells are um, kind of being told by their genes to produce less of this protein. So you're gonna go through and look through and um, look at this image again. So again, this column is your melanin A, APG5 is this column and then the overlay. And then for this row, this is your nevus or your benign cells. And then the melanoma here, this is your malignant um, human cells. So the main thing to remember here is that ATG5 is a marker for, auto, uh, for autophagy. Um, so then you're gonna use this information to go through here and answer these questions just about the staining, but then really thinking about um, in that confocal microscopy video we talked about you know, you can see these colors, but those colors have meaning. So we want to think about, okay, I see more or less of a color. And what does that mean about the functioning of the cell? So I think that you all are more than capable of being able to go through and answer the questions. Uh, if, you if you need any help, you can go back and look at that confocal microscopy um, video. I think that that will be really helpful. And then you can also um, talk to your teacher if you need any help. So thank you all for taking the time to watch the video and to do the um, activities. And I hope that it's an interesting uh, activity. Thank you.